In the heart of Boston and Brooklyn, following the contours of the muddy river lies 1100 acres of interconnected parks, meandering paths and vibrant waterways. We present you the Emerald Necklace. The visionary and the mastermind behind this incredible park system was Mr. Frederick Law Olmsted, the founder of American landscape architecture. He had a primary goal of establishing common grounds across cities, which made a huge impact across North America. What did he design? Well, what didn't he? His greatest works include New York Central Park, US Capitol Grounds, Montreal's 700-acre Mount Royal Park, and of course, Boston's Emerald Necklace. These 1100 acres link neighborhoods through winding paths and waterways. The nine emeralds also control flooding and relieves overcrowding. Picture Boston without the Common and the Public Garden or the Commonwealth Avenue Mall. What about the Back Bay Fence, the Riverway, Olmsted Park and the Jamaica Pond, not to mention the Arnold Arboretum and the Franklin Park. Professor Ted Landsmark directs the Dukakis Center for Urban and Regional Policy here at Northeastern University. I grew up in New York and I would ride my bicycle around Central Park and I always thought it was the most wonderful park in the world until I moved to Boston. A linear park, as is the case with the Emerald Necklace in Boston, where one is constantly encountering new features, new ways of thinking about space. Olmsted's green solution combined engineering skills with his signature style, carefully mimicking nature's symmetry. He recognized that it was important to have a pathway that didn't necessarily have a clear destination, that one is intrigued by what might lie around the next bend. Our group, while documenting the journey through Emerald Necklace, also visited Frederick Law Olmsted's house, known as Fairstead. It is located in Brookline and is also a national historic site. The house served as the headquarters for Olmsted's landscape architecture firm. Visitors can take guided tours of the house and the office to learn about Olmsted's life and work. The office contains exhibits on Olmsted's landscape design projects, including the Emerald Necklace. It was a fascinating experience to see where Olmsted and his team developed their innovative designs and to learn about the history of the Emerald Necklace and its impact on the city of Boston. The house itself is a beautiful example of the late 19th century architecture and the surrounding grounds are designed in a picturesque and naturalistic style that is the characteristic of Olmsted's work. As I entered the house, I was struck by the sense of history that permeates the place. The furnishings and decor are well preserved, giving a sense of what it would be have been like to work in the office during Olmsted's time. The guided tour provides a wealth of information about Olmsted's life and career, including his work on the Emerald Necklace. I learned that the Emerald Necklace is a series of interconnected parks and green spaces that Olmsted designed to provide the respite from the urban environment of Boston. The tour guide explained how Olmsted's design principles, such as the use of meandering pathways and strategically placed vistas, were implemented in the Emerald Necklace to create a sense of escape and immersion in this nature within the city. In the office, I saw exhibits that showcase Olmsted's design processes, including original plans and drawings for the Emerald Necklace. It was fascinating to see how Olmsted and his team translated their vision into detailed and practical designs. The exhibits also highlighted the engineering and the horticultural challenges that Olmsted faced in realizing the Emerald Necklace, and how he overcame them through innovative solutions. One exhibit that particularly stood out to me was a series of before and after photographs that demonstrated the transformative impact of Olmsted's work on the landscape of Boston. Overall, the experience of visiting Frederick Law Olmsted's house and office was both educational and inspiring. It provided a tangible connection to the history of landscape architecture and the impact of Olmsted's work on the urban environment. I gained a deeper appreciation for the thought and artistry that went into the design of the Emerald Necklace 
and for the enduring legacy of Frederick Law Olmsted as a pioneer in his field. While discussing the emerald necklace, it is also imperative to mention the muddy river. It is a central feature of Frederick Law Olmsted's vision of the emerald necklace. It has a rich history that dates back to the 1880s. Olmsted designed what he called the muddy river improvement to sculpt a sinuous flow through the Leverett Pond, the riverway, and the fence into the Charles River, allowing for an unflooded urban development along the boundaries of the riverway and fenway. However, the 20th century development severely compromised Olmsted's designs, leading to the river being choked by invasive plants and contaminated by stormwater runoff and pollutants. This resulted in large sections of the river being culverted and driven underground, leading to flooding and significant damage in 1996. In response to the damage, the US Army Corps of Engineers, in partnership with the Charter Contracting Company, undertook a 10-year restoration project. The first phase, completed in 2017, involved replacing the undersized culverts and daylighting sections of the river that were paved over in the past. This has not only improved the waterway's flood capacity, but also made for healthier water for aquatic life and surrounding vegetation. The second phase, which began in fall 2020, consists of dredging the bottom of the river deeper to prevent flooding and planting new trees and shrubs along the bank to restore and strengthen its shoreline. The $36.5 million project is estimated to be completed this year and is expected to improve the river's flood capacity and water quality, enhance natural habitats for local wildlife and benefits green spaces and habitats downstream for decades to come. The Muddy River Restoration Project is a crucial initiative that not only helps the river and surrounding parks, now, but it will also have long-term benefits for the environment and the community. It represents a significant effort to restore a vital nature resource and preserve it for the future generations. The project's success is evident in the drastic transformation of the area surrounding 401 Park Drive, a section of the Murray River that spent decades underground as a parking lot for the Sayers, Rosebuck & Company distribution center across the street. Upon the completion of the Phase 1, the newly restored area was returned to Parkland and named in honour of former Boston Parks Commissioner and Green Space Advocate Justin Meeliff. The ongoing Phase 2, with its focus on dredging and shoreline restoration, will further enhance the river's resilience and ecological value, ensuring that it means a vibrant community and healthy natural asset for the city of Boston.